Welcome to another What's Relevant. Uh, today, uh, what are we talking about, Silas? Well, I noticed that they um, just recently, November 15th, actually was the 44th anniversary of the 4004 microprocessor released by Intel, November 15th, 1971. So I thought, what a better time to talk about microprocessors and microcontrollers and what all that means. Sure, something that turned from a a 3D a constructed transistor in Bell Labs in 1947 to progressing to something with a whopping 2,800 transistors that was a microprocessor. Uh, yeah, uh, laid out by hand, no less. Yeah. Hand cut Ruby list. A uh, lot of has changed since then. Yeah, it has, it has. Uh, I mean, we, we've, we've gone from something that was 2,800 transistors to uh, looking at like the 32 nanometer process that's out there now. I and mean, we're talking about what? M microns, tens yeah. of microns at that to. 32 nanometers and below now, we're talking about 500 million transistors and moving to this. And now we were, we're talking about something that has a microprocessor as opposed to a microcontroller uh, that we often use in a lot of designs. Uh, microprocessor being that item that does the actual processing and has the instruction set to a microcontroller that has the integrated RAM and program memory, uh, the peripheral, sometimes data converters, and I.O. sometimes uh, when it comes to dealing with actual uh, serial or parallel protocols, right? Yeah, there's a, a microcontroller obviously has lots of integrated peripherals for communication and interface and things like that. What's interesting is that the uh, 4004, I think we've got a picture of it even, 16-pin uh, package, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about yeah. what a processor has done today. But of course, it was only four bits wide, had a shared address data bus, mm -hmm. um, and you know, now uh, you know, I might get a, a PIC or something like this in a 16-pin package, and it has program memory, RAM, EEPROM, everything on board, and this, this actually had to be used in conjunction with several other chips to even build uh, a basic four-function calculator back in the day, so. Yeah, we, we talk about saying a single-digit millimeters square. We can talk about a device for microcontrollers now, microprocessors, to something that was this, you know, large, not even monolithic providing package, right? Yeah, and, you know, another thing that's interesting is, you know, this was one chip from one vendor mm -hmm. and today we have so many vendors that release chips like this uh, I think of you know Intel obviously still big in the microprocessors sure. market and you know competition with AMD and mm -hmm. Qualcomm you know with phone yeah. processors a lot of popular uh, vendors out there for smaller stuff like uh, Atmel uh, providing uh, the actual core microcontroller for the Arduino platform yeah, and you know what's interesting is you know processors. This is a four-bit processor. Um, you know, computer processors today are, are mostly 64-bit. Um, you know, but you know the Atmel, TI, um, MSP430 with the BeagleBone and things like that. Sure, uh, Cypress, uh, the PIC microcontrollers. Sure. You know, 8-bit processing, 16-bit, and some 32-bit microcontrollers. They're all kind of out all there. The ARM stuff that's out there and other platforms too. Yeah, a lot of selection. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, uh, and that's something that uh, what. Duotech helps do when it comes to providing an in-use product is selecting between anything from an 8-bit to the 64-bit platforms that are out there. What's the right answer? Now, how do we converge on finding the right answer for the platform, the process, and solving the engineering problem at hand? Uh, yeah, well, you obviously have to take into consideration the requirements to design, mm -hmm. um, and that can be things like uh, you know power consumption. Microcontrollers are really great for consuming you know microamps of power over uh, periods of time if you have you know distributed instrumentation or something like that. Wide temperature ranges, sure. you know, microcontrollers give you that as well. Um, you know, and you know processing power, communications. I mean, even microcontrollers now can have USB and Ethernet ports. Um, you know, DSP cores. Uh, you can even get system on chip devices from companies um, like Xilinx that have ARM processors with FPGAs paired right together, soft processors. Um, you know, a lot of different choices depending on processing power, temperature requirements, my, uh, power consumption requirements sure. that you just have to, and, and then time to develop the software itself, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. So many times trying to mitigate that NRE cost when it comes to providing a good in use product for the customer. Uh, and as I was mentioned, there are a lot of platforms out there that's anything from hard mast arms sitting on uh, Zinc from Xilinx or Cyclone 5 from Altera to the soft processors like the, you know, the Neos and the Microblaze that provide some very powerful capability right there, ready to go in a, in a ready to use platform. Yeah, and you know, with open operating systems, we've got a lot of options to actually leverage that big power, you know, um, but sometimes if you want to control all the code and understand it all the way down to the low levels, microcontrollers become a very um, attractive option as well. So Absolutely. a lot of choices, um, but um, you know, we enjoy trying to run through that minefield and trying to help find the, the proper thing and develop the software and the support hardware and everything that goes along with it. 
when it comes to bringing a concept of a design to something that is an in-use product or a prototype, or proving the concept that you're trying to converge on for your requirements, visit us online at duotechservices.com, follow us on Twitter, and see how we can help you with your requirements.